I thought it would be a lot of fun to have this opportunity to look at the components that make up a BRS soft pack chute. Now this is one of those parachutes that you attach to your airplane and can deploy it if you run into some sort of trouble at some altitude and safely bring the plane and occupants down. I never actually saw the parts or the work that goes into installing one of these, so let's take a quick look at this. The parachute will be installed into this nice looking kit fox, which was recently built by our friends Killian and Evelyn near Edgewater, Florida. In this package here is the actual parachute which has been all packed inside. Now this will get installed into the plane however if you're wondering how do you install this securely in the plane we look at this container here. Now this is an aluminum frame that will get mounted to the aircraft and if you notice on the side here this is where the rocket will be stored and we'll see in a moment how the rocket will shoot out so we're going to aim that appropriately anyhow we will mount this securely to the airframe now this is not what is going to hold the parachute to the plane when it is deployed rather it's here just to contain the parachute itself so one of the first steps would be finding a suitable location to mount this keeping in mind that when the rocket deploys it needs to be in a position where it can exit the plane safely. Then we will store the actual parachute inside the container. And if you notice, there's all sorts of Velcro straps that allow it to be attached securely to this installation frame here. Let's take a closer look at the parachute itself. If I take the cover off, we notice a bunch of mechanical connections here. Now this one here, and we left open the shackle, will be attached to the rocket. In other words, when that rocket fires off, it is going to yank on this, which is going then to allow the parachute to be able to leave its packaging. Of course that rocket is taking off at high speed so it's going to rip this all apart and pull the parachute out away from the plane to allow it to inflate. Now remember where's that rocket going? It depends on how you have this frame mounted. So this rocket's going to go in this direction and we'll see there'll be a cable attached to the rocket and that cable goes to this location here and that's why we're able to connect it and disconnect it. Now also on the parachute we need a way to attach the parachute to the airframe very securely and that's what this very large connection is for here. So this will need to be attached to the airframe itself and we have some special uh, tethers that do that but notice the very strong connection so this is stronger because this is going to hold the entire parachute to the airframe whereas this connection is simply the rocket to the parachute to deploy it out of the plane now wouldn't it be interesting to look at what this rocket is all about right now it's an empty cylinder as you can imagine, something very powerful and sophisticated is going to go inside of here. I'm going to set this down. So imagine again that this is mounted to your aircraft and you have this positioned so that the rocket fires outward. Well, what we have to pack inside of this, and here are some of the components. Now, I'm no expert, so you will have to forgive me for my lack of knowledge. This, I'm not even going to touch. That is filled with some, I was told, things that brought our shuttle to the moon. Something like that. I think that is a dry rocket fuel. So I won't touch that. But that will go into this canister. See, it's empty, so really this is going to go in this direction. So I'll pack, I'll have someone 
pack the dangerous stuff inside the canister. Now, because remember, this is going to get shot out through the plane, and this will, of course, get packed into this tube. This will get shot out the plane. Notice that it's attached to these steel cables, and these are the cables with the ends flopping here that will get attached to the top of our parachute and pull the parachute out. So the parachute is headed with the rocket that shot out of this tube and is attached to this cylinder. Now, of course, I'm simplifying these things a bit, but that's basically how this is going to go together. Now, you might say, well, who tells the rocket to fire? Well, at the other end of this tube, you'll see a mechanism, kind of a firing pin type of thing. This will go to a cable, which we'll take a look at, already been installed in the plane, and that cable is what the pilot will decide to pull and to show you what gets attached to here, because remember now, the parachute has shot out the plane, pulled by our cable attached to the little guy up here. So this thing is about ready to leave the plane, but we don't want that to happen. We want to connect this to the plane. This gets connected to this small strap. Now, it doesn't look very strong, but I guarantee you a thousand horses and a thousand men can't pull this apart. So this is an extension. So this will separate the parachute from the plane by this distance. And then this end needs to attach to the plane itself to hold the plane in the air. And when we go over and walk to the plane now, we will see that there will be four cables attached to various locations on the plane that will be attached to here. And here is where that one cable attaches to, that big uh, clevis, and there are four bridles that go from that one location. And let's follow one of them and see where they go. Here's one here, and notice it's going to go up to the frame. This is a rag and tube aircraft, so all the tube is steel. So picture there will be four connections like that in various places. Obviously somebody read the directions and so those four will hold the entire plane and its occupants. Now, it'd be interesting to see where that parachute was going to be mounted and it's a little hard to see with the camera because we're close up but we're in the turtle deck area and right above me here is Lexan and I have a feeling if the rocket deploys it will shoot up and we may need to get a new piece of Lexan uh, before the next flight after that because the idea is there's no hole here, but it will be able to uh, go through there. I assume that's not bulletproof or anything. but um, so, so that's kind of how that works. Now, the cable that we pull in case we want to deploy the rocket is located... Now we're looking at the ceiling of this cockpit. This is a Kit Fox, and you see the red handle. And that red handle, when pulled, goes through a cable, and that cable attaches back to the bottom of that rocket canister, which we will go review right now. It attaches that cable to the bottom where there's that firing mechanism and fires off. Here is the outside of the Lexon canopy. Now, I have just been instructed that the builders need to construct an area that makes it easy for the rocket to deploy, so they will make some sort of hatch or opening after contacting the manufacturer as the best way for the rocket to get out of the plane as quickly as possible so that it can spread the parachute when it is ready to be deployed. There's a very extensive installation guide that comes with putting this in. I have not read it. That's why I have spared you the, some of the important details for installation. But I thought it would be interesting to see what goes into installing one of these because I think most of us have heard about these, but we never really see anything beyond just the 
picture in the magazines. There's always some extra details involved. 